Opportunity blown at Ewood Park as well because only force a draw with Northampton Town. On the plus side, we're still unbeaten in a bazillion games. We'll talk about that and much more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review, this time picking apart the latest cup final, the match against Northampton Town at Ewood Park. But now, before I jump into it, if you're new to the channel, you might want to hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Now, this game at Ewood Park was a crucial game in the grand scheme of things. There was a huge opportunity for Rovers to kind of really stick a claim on that second spot and even pile some pressure on Wigan. Let's just take a look at the factors that went into this match before we even kicked off. So the scene was set. Rovers, if they had won this game, would have closed in the gap no matter what went on around the ground, around the country. Uh, they would have closed the gap to number one spot to just two points. Meanwhile, the third best team, Shrewsbury Town, they also received a stonking bit of bad news prior to kickoff. Goalkeeper was banned for three matches. He seems to be one of the key factors in the reason why they are so high up in the table. Anyway, so Dean Henderson with a three-match ban for his actions that, that occurred at Ewell Park involving him and some fans and some coins and all that kind of stuff. So, but that blueprint fell completely flat on its ass today as we could only manage a draw against a very, very fortunate Northampton Town. That's all I can say about them. It looked like one of those days. In fact, I thought Northampton Town were going to be the, the team that breaks our unbeaten run uh, because once they took got their noses in front on the 12th minute through a, a goal that I didn't see coming. It was all Rovers. It was all Rovers before their goal and it was all Rovers after their goal. They just had that one uh, nugget of, of, of attacking play and they capitalized on it. And that nugget came from, uh, I think it was a Blackburn Rovers set piece. It was either a free kick or a corner. I can't remember. They had this uh, excellent counter attack. I'll give them credit for that, and it resulted in a goal. Uh, but but after all that, it was all Rovers. And in the second half, big DG Danny Graham uh, had other ideas, and he actually made it a, a right little tense affair for the last 15 minutes after he scored on the 74th minute. Let's take a look at the statistics of the match itself. Take a look at those statistics for you 59% possession for Blackburn Rovers, 16 shots, seven of those on target, 10 corners to Northampton zip. And uh, on the flip side, four shots for Northampton, just the one on target, and that one probably went in the back of the net. So uh, 11 fouls for Northampton. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Here are the starting lineups. First and foremost, the hosts, the best team in the world, Blackburn Rovers. In goal, David Raya, Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Conway, Bennett, Smallwood, Dak, Graham, and Samuel. Uh, furthermore, before we get stuck into a bit more detail, Skipper Captain Mulgrew um, uh, was, was substituted early in the first half, which led to Amari Bell coming on for his debut. And he had a bit of a blinder. Uh, he got man of the match. Uh, let's take a look at actually the statistics for me or the player ratings. This is how I felt the Rovers players performed. Uh, Raya had a six. Naomi had a six. Downing had a six. Mulgrew had a five. Williams had a stonking eight at centre back. Uh, like I said, Amari Bell came on and took his role at left back. Conway with a six, Ben with a six, Small with a six, Bradley Dag with an eight, Danny Graham with an eight, and uh, Dominic Samuel with a six. So on the grand scheme of things, when you look at those numbers, you think uh, it must have been a bit of a toothless display. It was a bit of a bit of I don't know. Obviously, statistics show that we were peppering the goal and had a lot of opportunities to to win it. But some of the efforts, well, when you look back at some of the highlights, uh, Armstrong came on in the second half. He had what was considered probably one of the worst shots ever at Ewood Park. It went out for a throw and it was, no, you know, obviously, you know, tension's there and we needed to get, I think it was, I think we were actually still behind at that point. But uh, tension was there. We needed to get a goal or we needed to get a goal and his effort was well wide. It was redonkulous. So uh, check, be sure to check that out. I don't know if they'll allow it on the highlights because it was that bad. But um, yeah, the numbers don't like Raya had nothing to do. The centre backs, uh, well, Williams kept kept his, I, I was well impressed with his performance as centre back. So should Mulgrew be out? Uh, a little bit longer, like for, for for instance, we do take on Walsall on Tuesday. 
perhaps Williams will come in at centre back and partner Downing and Bell will get the nod to start because he should have done he should look to start now after that you know uh, he was full of tricks full of beans and he looks uh, a quality player realistically a player that shouldn't be in this division just like Blackburn Rovers we should be in this division what also irks me is the fact that we're not in the pro automatic promotion spots here we only lasted one week before dropping back into third place and um yeah, we take on we take on Warsaw Tuesday with the opportunity to get second place back, but also Wigan are in action. Um, I'm not sure who they play, but we'll find out in my preview show, which will be out in about 24 hours. As for our visitors, this is how they lined up. O'Donnell, Facey, Taylor, Poole, Turnbull, Hoskins, Crooks, Grimes, Bunny, the prettiest man in football, O'Toole and Long. Obviously, Matt Grimes, former, uh, former Rover, was on loan. Uh, uh, from Swansea, I believe, or Leeds, or one of the teams. Obviously, now he is on the books, probably on a loan at Northampton Town. Um, so, yeah, it was a very frustrating performance because we, uh, you know, it was. I, I thought this was going to be the, the moment that we were going to actually dig our teeth into it and actually get a firm hold of number two spot and put some pressure on number one spot. It didn't pan out that way. So the two times we played Northampton uh, this season, uh, we've only managed two points. And it's frustrating to see where they are in the table. They are 20th now in the table. Uh, and then we could only manage two draws. Obviously the, the penalty miss from Antonsen, uh, the away leg um, is still lingering in the back of my mind. And now today with the referee putting in a piss poor performance as well, when I think we should have had a penalty um uh there was a couple of shouts anyway um uh, in the match and and it was just it's just fr so frustrating that that we were we were playing up against 11 men plus a referee um uh, full credit to jimmy floyd and his boys they got what they wanted i think i think they would would have taken a point um prior to kick off so they got their uh they got their just desserts but it's just frustrating because um, now we're back in third place season ended today we ain't get promoted uh, we'd have to settle for the lottery of the playoffs. As for the rest of the playoff contenders, Bradford slipped up. Not sure about Scunthorpe. Um, so it, we, there is a bit of a gap opening up between third and the rest of the chasing pack. But I want to be in second spot at least and a bit of a gap. Anyway, you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. What's the gaffer been saying? Here's what he said shortly after the final whistle. Oh, no. Oh no, I think so. I think we played pretty well today, to be honest. I think um, we knocked on the door a lot today, um, restricted them to any real chances other than their goal, maybe one towards the end. But um, yeah, just frustrating that we didn't get what we deserved from the game. I thought they worked extremely hard. I thought, um, yeah, disappointing. But no, I think we were miles better today than we were at Northampton last month. It's football, you know, sometimes you can score three every week, it's, um, it's, it's what happens. I think got the ball into good enough positions to score today, but didn't uh, didn't fall for us, it was just the way it went. But it's very difficult when you're playing against, you know, such a packed defence, really, with so many men in the box. It, um, I think it's, I think we worked the ball all right. I think Amari showed the talent he possesses. I thought there was, I don't know how many balls flew across the face of their goal, really. You just need somebody there to put it in. It, um, yeah, listen, I thought uh, uh, no criticism for me at all for the team today, to be honest. I think it was a fantastic effort from them. I thought, I thought the performance level was really high, higher than a lot of games that we've actually won. And yet, that's football. There's a lot of games to go. We've got to keep going. Well, I think you try to find the weaknesses in a, in a, in a team. And I think we um, we probed. I thought we, you know, we, we found a, a deficiency down, you know, down their right, down our left attacked their, their side of the pitch and then they made some changes to try and strengthen it up but um, that's all right it's it's uh, you know credit to them they blocked it up they worked really hard they had physicality about them and um, basically what we thought I think but ultimately we never got the rewards that's uh, the, the positive play um, probably deserved but we didn't get there in the end you hope so don't you but I think that would have been like that for most of the game to be honest it's um, I don't think it was just the second half. I think for staff we were pretty dominant as well. It just wasn't going to break for us. I think um, listen, the, the days like this, you have to take them on the chin. It can't, it can't be happy, great every day. You can't win every football match. I think you know we did enough to probably win the day. But um, credit to them for digging in and making it difficult. And I'm a bit disappointed with a 
with the officials really the, the amount of time that got wasted today was you know was ridiculous really um, I felt as if he didn't have control of the game and, and, and that was frustrating because he didn't help us he kept breaking the floor but I think we had momentum I just they kept just puncturing it really and the referee allowed him to and if anything he made it even worse by posturing and pulling people towards him if he's going to book somebody just book him let's get on with the game you can feel the tension in the game you could have it now, listen, I don't like to stand here and criticise officials, it's, it's hard, but goodness me, he, he, could, he has to feel it, he has to feel the game, he has to see what they're doing and, and understand and get on and help the team that's trying to win the match. I don't know, to be honest, I've got to get a scan, it's um, ankle, I think, let's wait and see. Well, you know, for years, Sir Mary Bell, that's why we worked so hard to get him here, you know, he's a quality footballer, he's, he's going to be a massive attribute to the football club moving forward, and... Um, no, let's, let's see, we're disappointed with Charlie, obviously we'd have won in Charlie, Charlie's been a fantastic performer for us this season, a real leader and a star in the team and uh, yeah, and we'll wait and see what the damage is. Well you've heard what the gaffers have to say, what about the players and the fans, here's what's been going on on social media, Elliot Bennett out there tweeting on the Twitter for you, disappointing not to take all three points today, we're the better team throughout, but that's football, unbeaten run continues to 17 another huge one tuesday meanwhile ex-player kevin gallagher said this need to work on better movement when dak has the ball and when his game is getting nullified lots of possession but wasted opportunity was it one point gained or two points dropped certainly two points dropped mr gallagher uh meanwhile amy prescott said this gah two points drop uh disappointing and a couple of little emojis there talk of evil said this Got to say, William stepped up brilliantly when Mulder went off. Didn't step a foot wrong. Meanwhile, Becky said this. Can't comment much as I missed the game. Disappointing result, but on to Tuesday. Meanwhile, Northern Rover also on Twitter said this. No point going overboard with criticism as we are going to get some performances where we don't play well. Key is to stay in touch with Shrewsbury for now. I 100% agree with that, Northern Rover. Meanwhile, Rob Young said this. Still unbeaten in 17 with a game in hand. Onwards and upwards, lads. The game in hand. Yes, you're right. Um, in fact, we have two games in hand with some of the other teams chasing us. But the fact is we don't have a game in hand on Shrewsbury. And we're actually, we're going to have a game in hand on us. So those are the two crucial factors in there. Yeah, it's a game in hand. But right now, that doesn't really count. That game in hand, or the two games in hand, mean nothing. Because so does Shrewsbury. So does Shrewsbury. So do we again. Mm, doesn't really matter. Meanwhile, Amy said this. A point is better than none. See you next week in Plymouth. Meanwhile, we take on Walsall Tuesday. Uh, Mark Whittle said this. Gutted not to win, but at least we took something from the game. And we move on to Tuesday. Meanwhile, Chris P said this. Not the result we wanted today, but there's another game without defeat. 17 unbeaten and best spirit around the squad and club for years. Hashtag promotion push. Meanwhile, Adil Musa said this, keeping positive as that makes 17 games unbeaten. Meanwhile, Andrew Wilding said this, a point's a point, but we have to stop dropping three points against the bottom half teams. Being our problem all season. Points are never guaranteed, but we need to be grabbing these points when we have the chance. Back to third, two points behind. Meanwhile, Simon Woodford said this, damn, two points dropped and big chance missed to close the gap to two points on Wigan. On the positive note, unbeaten run continues. On to the next one. Meanwhile, Matthew Grimshaw on Facebook said this, frustrating, two points drop there. Meanwhile, Keith Coding or Codling also on Facebook said this, if this is how fans are going to act when we draw a game, I dread to think what will happen when we finally lose. Admittedly, it wasn't a great performance or result. We are only two points from the automatic promotion places with plenty of games left to play. Let's start, start getting angry if we are still third with two games left. Andy Woods on Facebook said, Amari Bell, wow, what a great debut. Andrew Itten said this, days like this happen overseas. 18 games to go and a long, long way to go. Plenty of twists and turns, yet we are the Rovers and up the Rovers. Frank, Ad Frank Andrews said this, that's twice we've battered Northampton, left shooting boots at home, but they used all the tactics they could to stop us. Should have been a pen as well, it seems, but run keeps going. Need to win on Tuesday. We're going to be knackered soon with games piled up. So lots to play for. Come on, you blues. Okay, moving on to the forum, the BRFCS forum. If you've not checked out the forum, you're missing out. There's a lot of big old Rovers fans out there. 
people you might know, people you probably don't know, people from around the world, all that kind of stuff. They're all putting out their points. Here's Rossi Rover. Rossi Rover said this, Northampton are a team who seem to know every trick in the book to frustrate. And we had a referee who was so poor and I cannot find words I can put into print to describe his performance. Also, they fielded some of the tallest players I've ever seen on a football field and some of the most prettiest. Number 22 must have been over six foot six inches, yet we per persisted in playing high balls, which their tallest players easily dealt with. Why could we not have kept the ball on the floor is a mystery to me. Meanwhile, BB Rovers 2288. We, uh, we can't actually fault Northampton for playing like they did. Uh, it's what we attempted every game last year. Newcastle game, question mark. Something about today before kickoff that made me think we might struggle today. We seem to gift opposition at least one goal every week. Mowbray to me is failing far too many draws and despite some wins we have rarely dominated 90 minutes this year we always seem to struggle whereas Wigan breeze through games in my opinion we should be the team Wigan have been this year we were better with a god-awful team and manager last season so why have they developed so much more than us fault lies at Tony's doors for me and if he if he gets us up I don't think he'll be the man to take us high up in the championship I honestly nab Hurst from Shrews derail them when we'll get a cracking manager well that's some point there K Hod basically we were rubbish today in the main Northampton must have thought it was their birthday when they scored and had something to protect the way they wasted time was quite something today and went unpunished despite the referee letting the keeper get away with taking eternity each time they had a goal kick Bell looks very good on today's evidence. Hopefully today was a minor setback and the injury to Mulgrew isn't too serious. That said, I felt Williams did okay at centre. But the time wasted today was absolutely uh, uh, unbelievable. So frustrating, especially a goal, goal down. Uh, and I could see it on the other side. If we were... If we were in the Prem battling for survival or even in the Championship battling for survival uh, and we were getting dominated left, right and centre every week, I can I can see how, how Northampton would do that. That's football. It's a funny old game. You can always see it. You do see it um, in tinted glasses. Uh, but it was it was it was really uh, blowing my fuse. Meanwhile, let's go around the ground, take a look at some of the other fixtures that uh, affected the table. Look at that Wigan, obviously postponed today, but they did do the business in the FA Cup, taking out West Ham. Meanwhile, uh, where are they? Shrewsbury. One 0 win, big one 0 win. Uh, Portsmouth down to ten men. That win puts them back into second spot. Meanwhile, Bradford, where are you, Bradford? I think you had a bit of spanking there. Yeah, yes, they did. At home to AFC Wimbledon. That win uh, for Wimbledon puts them up to 16th. And that loss to Bradford drops them down to 5th place. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up today. We all think it's Blackburn Rovers. The games are coming thick and fast once again. Take on Warsaw uh, midweek. I think it's Tuesday. And then it's, I think it's Plymouth next saturday correct me if i'm wrong i don't have the calendar in front of me so frustrating afternoon's football for rovers but fear not another game is just around the corner so hopefully we can rectify a couple wrongs and then actually get those three points maybe just maybe we can be back in the promotion spots one more time before next saturday anyway i've had enough i'm exhausted until next time thumbs up subscribe Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.